Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next classification is fungi. So what are fungi? Have you ever observed that if you keep a piece of bread, bread, you do not keep it inside the refrigerator, just take a piece of bread and keep it outside at normal room temperature for a couple of days. I mean, not just for one or two days, but for a couple of days, maybe some six, seven days. What happens over a period of time? As time passes, you will see that the bread gets spoiled. That's what we call it. And we just throw it into the dustbin. Now, have you ever observed how a spoiled bread looks like? So this is how it looks like. You will see the appearance of some uh, white or gray, grayish naked appearance on the bread. And this indicates that the bread is spoiled. Now, the first question is, what is this structure which is formed on the surface of the bread? And how is it formed? So this is nothing but fungi. Now what happens is when you leave it just at the room temperature, over a period of time, these microorganisms called fungi develop on the bread. And these fungi are responsible for spoiling the bread. So let us see what are these. But on, on, on the same scenario, instead of keeping the bread outside, if you keep it inside the refrigerator, what happens? It stays good. It doesn't get spoiled. Why is that? That's because when you keep it inside the refrigerator, you are actually keeping it at a very low, low temperature. Now, at that low temperature, fungi is not able to grow because fungi, they are also living organisms and they also need appropriate climate and appropriate temperature to grow. So, inside the refrigerator, the temperature is very low. Therefore, it is not appropriate for growth of fungi and that is why the bread is not spoiled. So these fungi are multicellular organisms, that is multi means multiple. So this is made up of multiple cells, so not one cells but a group of cells together form the fungi. They are heterotrophic, that is they depend on others for their food, they cannot prepare their own food. Now what kind of food do they actually eat upon or what, what, is, what is their food in habit actually? Now they can feed on dead and decaying matter. So one type of food for them is dead and decaying matter. So what is this dead and decaying matter? Now plant remains or animal remains after they die. So basically the fungi is dependent on other organisms like plants and animals so that when they die it can feed upon their dead and decaying matter. So that is one type, one source of food for them. Next is they can exist with other organisms and therefore get food from them. So association with other organisms like as I mentioned before also. Maybe that uh, fungi lives within a mutual uh, association with another organism where fungi also helps that organism in some way and that organism provides food to the fungi. So that is another way of getting food from other organisms. And the third scenario is it can also be parasitic. That means it lives inside the body of another animal and gets its food from that animal. And at the same time, it is parasitic. That means it will cause disease to that animal. So fungi can also be parasitic in nature. So these are some of the ways by which fungi obtain their food. They prefer warm and moist places to grow and that is why the bread which was left outside, it tends to catch fungi because fungi gets a suitable environment. It gets a warm place as well as moist place because when you keep the bread open, there is a lot of moisture present in the surroundings or present in the atmosphere. So they are due to the presence of that moisture plus the temperature is quite warm and both the things taken together help in the growth of fungi. But the same bread when you keep it inside the refrigerator, the temperature is very low. So warm place is not available. Secondly, moisture also is not there to support the growth of fungi live in colonies so fungi also they do not live in isolation they also live in groups immobile they do not move from one place to another so they do not have any locomotory organ as such so they just remain at one place 
So let us look at some of the examples of fungi. So yeast is a very common example of fungi. Mushroom is another example and molds are another example of fungi. So these are the three most common examples of fungi. Now let me tell you where you would have encountered each of these. Now if you talk about molds, you would have seen it the way you are seeing it on the screen. Like if you keep an orange or any other fruit, just do not refrigerate it, keep it at room temperature for quite a few days. What happens? You see a white layer which is being formed on the surface of the fruit. So this layer which is formed is due to the growth of fungi and these fungi specifically are molds. Mushroom are the ones which you often eat as well. So this is edible. So you would have often eat, eaten dishes prepared out of mushroom. So mushrooms are also nothing but fungi. Yeast, they are often used in the uh, baking industry, like if you want to prepare bread or if you want to prepare certain types of cakes. So in that you need yeast. You would have, if you go to a departmental store, you will often see that yeast powder is available in packets. So this yeast powder, it is also prepared from yeast. So these are some of the examples of fungi and we will see how they are helpful to us and again how they are harmful to us. So this was the second class. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.